Hi, this is Rodney Sparks, and I am um, the one who did the sous vide reverse seared ribeye steak video. Um, wanted to show you how my sous vide controller is put together. So I put a schematic and a drawing set in the description of that video, and here I'll just show how I actually put it together. So starting with this power outlet here, what I did is I soldered focus on that. I soldered this wire here and here. These are This is the safety ground and this is neutral. I soldered those. I used 14 gauge wire and then this is hot over here and I used red for the hot. Um, so the safety ground and neutral wires come straight over here to the power inlet. And um, and then I have coming off of there the neutral, this purple, that goes over to the PID controller. Um, I also uh, connected to the this white wire is actually hot. I didn't adhere to the color code at all. Um, this white wire here goes over to the PID controller also. So the purple and white wires are hot and neutral going over to power the PID controller. Uh, the hot side of the power inlet comes down through this jumper that's built onto the connector. This is the input of the fuse and the output of the fuse. There's a 10 amp, well I put a 15 amp fuse in there. Um, and so this is the output of the fuse. Now this is the hot wire that comes from the fuse down to the side, the, um, the output side of the solid state relay and you can see it's on terminal 2. Um, I don't know if it matters which way you hook it up but yeah and then this is the uh, the output, I'm sorry, this is the input side. The output side is on, I have on terminal 1 and the um, and that goes out to the power outlet, the hot terminal and the power outlet. So now you see the uh, the purple and white wires. Those are the hot and neutral that are used to power the PID controller. And you can see those go to terminal 1, which is hot. I think on the schematic, that's actually labeled as, um, as neutral. Um, but it's actually hot here. And then I have neutral going to 2. Technically, the polarity there doesn't matter, but um, yeah. So that's where the, and I use small 20 gauge wire for that. That that doesn't draw much current at all, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then on the temperature sensor, you see I have the gray, gray, and yellow. Um, and the yellow is the signal, the gray is the return, and then the other gray that's on terminal 6 is, um, is the second return line that doesn't have any current going through it. So they can cancel out the drop uh, across the wiring to get a more accurate reading. Um, so then on the SSR output, uh, terminals 9 and 10, you see 9 is the, is the negative side, 10 is the positive side and those go right over to the inputs of this solid state relay and that's what drives the relay. So pretty simple. Um, the only details here I'd say uh, that I would change with respect to how I did it are you see those nuts down there they were really hard to get to and there's not enough room in there for a wrench. If I had it to do again I would use a uh, an aluminum um, hexagonal uh, standoff, you know, where you've got the um, or a barrel nut, whatever you want to call it, where you basically have a uh, a piece of hex stock that's tapped on the inside. And I used a 632 fastener there, uh, just because that's what I had, and I countersunk it on the bottom. And so um, let me adjust that so you can see it. Um, come on. So there's a countersunk, you know, flathead screw down there coming up into these um, nuts on the inside. Um, 
This actually worked pretty well. What I did is I held the nut down, uh, I believe, with a screwdriver, the tip of a screwdriver, just to keep it from spinning. And when I got just a little bit of tightness there, the uh, these are Keps nuts. They have the toothed washer under them. That started grabbing the solid state relay and, and was able to sit still, so I didn't need to put a wrench on it. Um, I put it on this side rather than the lid because, see on this case, there's a lid that slides into a groove right here and goes right on. I put it on the case because it does create some heat. It does generate heat and I wanted to make sure and have as much heat sinking as possible. And when I ran my dad's um, uh, 15 amp uh, smoker with this thing, an electric smoker, that runs just fine. Uh, but it is enough heat that I actually had to stand this up on edge like that so you get better natural convection off of this vertical face. Um, and uh, so getting it coupled to the case is fairly important, so I do recommend putting it in the bottom half of the case like this. Um, the only other issue I had is when putting on this power outlet... Uh, I don't think it was a problem. Well, the inlet, too. Um, you can see that in here, see if I can focus on it, you've got these features that are meant to stop on the back of the panel. The panel was a little bit too thick, so I had to dremel away some thickness on the panel. You can see it right here, too. I had to dremel away some thickness right there so that it would actually click. Um... Otherwise, it wouldn't have uh, captured behind the panel. It would have uh, been able to pull right back out. So that was the only pain in the butt. But those drawings in the drawing set where I have the template for this panel, that's exactly the drawing I used. And what I ended up doing is um, I, I laid it on the panel and then punched a hole at each corner uh, with, a, with a sharp point of some type. I, I don't know what I used, but... Um, I think I took an X-Acto knife and poked it through the paper and and twirled it a little twirled it a little bit and then just uh, you know took the paper off and then used a, uh, an X-Acto knife to scribe um, basically with a straight edge connecting the dots um, to get a pattern there and then I just got out my Dremel and just started cutting so yeah those are pretty easy to carve through. Um, yeah, and other than that, we've got the uh, the little solder cup connector here that um, I used for the, the temperature sensor, and that worked out really nicely. Um, I like that connector because you can just push it straight on. And then, um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, the other cool thing is this connector has a fuse drawer that you can theoretically pop out and inside of there is room for a spare fuse. The one in the back is the only one that's actually connecting and the one out here is actually a spare. So that's a pretty nice little feature on that connector. So there you go. I should have posted that about two years ago. <laughs> All right, let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.